thank you very much, Alison, and, and thank you to all of you for that. Well, welcome. I'm Rue. Uh, I'll go back to that. I'm Rue, um, head of emerging platforms at Widen and Kennedy, um, which, a bit like Hillary, really, is one of these job titles that you're always trying to work out how to explain it to people. Um, I'm still not quite there yet. I've been in the role since December, um, and what I can tell you is it's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm getting to work with this incredible ad agency, and now now on the inside of it, helping clients understand how to use the internet to its full effect, keeping an eye on the future, thinking about kind of um, what's the art of the possible now and, and what might be coming up in the next few months and years. That's, a, that's as good as I've ever been able to describe it, really. Uh, today I want to share with you uh, some work that we've done recently for Cravendale. Now, before we get to the bit, where we, I'm not going to show the advert because we don't have time, but before we get to the bit where I actually talk about the advert itself, by show of hands, how many people in the room have seen the recent Cravendale advert with the cats with the thumbs that come in the house to try and get the milk? Anyone seen it? Please, more than three or four of you. Okay, so some of you have seen this advert. I'm, I'm relieved that it's uh, that you're aware of. It, it's an interesting brand to work with. Milk is actually, uh, most people would say, relatively boring. Uh, you know, you, you walk through a uh, supermarket aisle, and the technical characteristics of Cravendale, the idea that it's triple filtered and, you know, ultra... Um, yeah, ultra filtered through you know three layers of ceramic filtering isn't really something that's very easy to sell it on. Uh, instead, over the last few uh, over the last few years, we've been trying to make it fun, trying to make Cravendale something that people have a warm relationship with. Uh, so the two emotional characteristics that we've been using in this campaign have been breathless enthusiasm on the part of the brand. You know, the brand itself is slightly over the top, slightly too enthusiastic about everything it does, and mismatched intensity. The idea that there is a, a certain um, way of looking at the world, and if you go a bit further than that, then it both becomes funny and interesting at the same time. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. Um, what we realized was that uh, cats had been, over the last uh, however many hundred years that they've been in our lives, a very big part of human culture. Uh, and also that there was this weird anomaly where cats, it's called polydactyl, uh, polydactylism. Cats uh, are known to be uh, developing an extra digit, uh, like a thumb. It's not opposable, they can't do very much with it, but it, uh, it sort of begs the question, what do you do with that? You know, what, what if cats could open doors? What if cats could uh, um, you know, open up their own food? I'm a dog person, and to me, this, uh, this idea that cats only come into your house so that they can be fed and, and be looked after is a pretty obvious one. I think cats are quite calculating, mean little bastards. But, and a dog isn't like that, you know, a dog, when it comes and says hello, it genuinely loves you. You're seeing me, and, and wow, that's confusing and unusual. Um, one thing we had to do before we got into the uh, cat and thumb bit of the campaign was say goodbye to the previous campaign, which you may have seen as well, Cow Pirate Cyclist. Uh, it was really well loved, everyone uh, had a lot of affection for this campaign, and we knew that when we said goodbye to it, uh, some people would be sad, so we made a little goodbye video, which I won't show you, but you can look it up. Uh, it's a nice little song kind of wraps up that, that, whole, that whole campaign. And for this new bit, for the, for the Cats with Thumbs campaign, we um, took a number, of, uh, a number of kind of tactical approaches, a number of elements of the execution that were all joined up and all built on each other to tell a big story, but also to give people different ways of being involved and engaged. So we realized that the main character from the advert, he's called Bertram, uh, and he's kind of the, ling the ringleader cat with thumbs, he's a, he's a thumb cat. So Bertram thumb cat would be our kind of um, ambassador, really, for, the, for this new breed of the cats who are trying to take over the world. And he does have plans for world domination. Bertram thumb cat is quite a, quite a sneaky little man. Uh, cat, not man. Um, uh, so thinking then specifically about him, obviously, you know, this, this character had to be uh, on social networks. And he had to be there before the ad was on TV. So we realised that the, you know, the, the way of doing this is to kind of set um, some, some ongoing conversations running and, and getting people to, to know that this was here before they then saw it on television. Because you can't, you know, if we'd done it the wrong way around, if we'd released an advert and then said, oh, and, and now we're going to have to make this character that everyone loves something that you can, you can join in with, there wouldn't have been any backstory, there would have been nothing on day one to, to see and to enjoy and to respond to. So Bertram started well before anybody who knew who he was, which is quite an interesting challenge for you know for the people on the creative side of uh, of the agency thinking about you know how can he get 
people laughing? How can he be saying and doing things that are in character? Um, uh, and obviously, at, at the early stages, we weren't expecting anyone to really. Uh, we weren't expecting very big numbers. We didn't think lots of people would would uh, know about him. And you know, even a few hundred, we were quite we were quite pleased with. Um, the next stage, again, before the advert launched, was to start making and sending out boxes to certain key people. Uh, some of them celebrities, some of them um, cat people. Uh, one, one guy who's a vet and a writer who, who runs a very popular blog. Uh, this one was for Ricky Gervais. Um, that's a doll of Carl Pilkington. Uh, and Ricky vlogged about it. But Ricky said, you know, cats with thumbs have sent me, uh, sent me this toy. Um, we sent a box to Beefy, who is Heat Magazine's cat. Uh, and he's got quite a big following on Facebook, and he talked about uh, about this campaign quite a lot. And then this guy, Tom Cox, um, very kindly wrote, uh, we didn't ask him to, but because he knew about the campaign, and we, we sent him uh, some, some cardigans, uh, he wrote this blog post um, in which he shows uh, he shows that he has credibility and, and that you know he's not going to be won over by having, being, being sent some freebies. Uh, but then you can probably just about read it there. He says, oh, OK, you know, here's, here's, the, uh, here's the pictures. Um, and then, even better, he then wrote about it in the Express as well, which was lovely. Uh, so, the next bit, which you may have seen, um, is this video, The Amazing Cat Giving the Thumbs Up. By show of hands, how many people saw that video? About the same number. So this was something that we did um, about a week before the, camp before the advert launched on television, was to put out what I suppose some people would describe as seeding a viral video. I don't like either of those terms particularly. Uh, I think a viral video is only viral if it spreads. You, can, you can't really set out to create one uh, and call it one before it's been popular and successful. Uh, but in retrospect, it worked very well. We had you know, a couple of million views pretty quickly, actually. Uh, and it was shared a lot on Facebook and, and Twitter, and people really liked it. It got uh, quite a lot of coverage, uh, a lot of um, kind of cat culture blogs.